Ten deities within Ashes of Creation formed a pantheon of gods that existed in a realm outside of the material plane. There was a celestial struggle among the gods that fractured them into good and evil. Seven of the gods ended up on the light side, where three of the gods in their original racial creation, the race of the ancients, ended up on the dark side. But who are these gods? What do they stand for as individuals to combine into the pantheon of gods? We know that the gods are beings of the essence, the metaphysical energy or life force that can be manipulated to create a power that nerds like us can identify as the magic of Vera. The gods are capable of reaching into the material plane through the souls of their divine beings. When it comes to the seven, the perceived good gods, we currently know of only six. These gods represent the various aspects of the universe. There's the goddess of love, the goddess of fate, the god of hope, the goddess of time, and the god of truth. And last but certainly not least is the goddess of creation, who manifests as a phoenix and was the savior of a majority of the populace on Vera when the attack from the others and the ancients touched ground. The goddess of creation is the god who opened the portals to Sanctus, allowing many to escape the apocalypse that was destroying the planet. So this brings to the forefront of our questions another mystery. Who is the seventh god of the seven? And to that end, what universal influence do the others possess? These three fallen or perceptually evil gods must have some sort of focus themselves, wouldn't you agree? Well, as Stephen puts it, fans and lorehounds of Ashes of Creation are, at this point, only able to see the lore through a keyhole. And there is much more to discover once we actually step foot on Vera's soil. But that doesn't mean that we can't speculate, right? So let's start with the others. The three disgraced gods who battled with the other seven over teaching the secrets of the essence to the ancients. You'll recall the ancients were imbued with all of the best qualities of the gods and tasked with stewardship of all the gods' creation. Well, a great battle commenced when seven of the gods discovered this malicious secret. A battle that resulted in the Others and the Ancients being banished into the Void, where the Essence was weakest. What possible aspects or qualities could the Others have possessed? What were each of them known as? While well, dancing around in my crazy lore-forged mind, perhaps the others didn't start out evil or bad at all. Perhaps their good intentions for the ancients and the disagreement with the Seven caused a catalyst of events to erupt within their very souls. Couldn't it be believable that before their fall to evil, these gods could have been embodiments of more balanced or even positive aspects? which would make their descent into malevolence all the more tragic and impactful. What are some possible examples of who the others were, as compared to what they became? Now, keep in mind I'm taking a stab in the dark here, so don't take these manifestations of a lore-driven mind as gospel, but just hear me out. Let's take the first of the others, name unknown, 
or they could perhaps have been known as the God of Reflection when they were among the Ten. A God of Contemplation, Insight, and Restoration. Their realization that the Seven had betrayed them, and this sense of betrayal, transformed them into the embodiment of hopelessness, their banishment to the Void. The God of Reflection had become transformed into the God of Despair. Or the second of the others, also name unknown, could have been known as the Goddess of Renewal, representing regeneration, transformation, and fertility, her influence ensuring the fertility of the land and promoting growth and the flourishing of all living things. However, in her banishment to the depths of the void, the goddess of renewal was disillusioned and felt the unwillingness of the seven to open the minds of the ancients to the will of the essence was a blatant disregard for the natural cycles of life and the universe. This goddess of renewal, through anger and betrayal, was transformed into the goddess of decay, twisting her purpose into one of relentless destruction. And the last of the others, perhaps once known as the god of order, symbolize the principles of stability, protection, and organization, maintaining the harmony and structure within the cosmos and among the civilization that they had helped create. But perhaps the void was capable of driving even the minds of a god mad, and the god of order was slowly transformed into an exploited, unbalanced being known as the god of ruin. His frustration and eventual despair over the perversion of order into chaos transformed him into a deity of ruin and destruction, seeking to obliterate the very structures he once upheld. Perhaps their fall into the void caused these three gods to undergo a physical change when the power of the essence was stripped from their being, manifesting them into their true evil form. Yes, I'm fully aware that we're grasping at straws here, but it's kind of fun, don't you think? So let's have a bout of speculation into what we think the last of the seven gods could represent. Why would the lore-tastic mind of Stephen Sharif keep this last god so secretive that he's never once uttered their name or their influence? Could we perhaps speculate that this final god is all-powerful and holds stewardship over all? Could this final, unrevealed god be the grand designer, the divine overseer, or the overall source of divine power in the cosmos? The ultimate architect of the essence itself, holding power and ownership not only of the gods, light or evil, but the very being of every living soul within creation. Majestic and wise, this supreme god of all could hold omnipotence as the ultimate deity, symbolizing the unity and interdependence of all forces, opposite or united. Overseeing the cosmic balance between good and evil, they could ensure that neither force overwhelms the other, maintaining the harmony between these fundamental aspects of reality. They could be the ultimate authority, playing sides perhaps, demonstrating that light and darkness are but two sides of the same coin and necessary for the overall function and balance of the universe. Again, mindful speculation to feed your fire. What do you think this god would be named? Let us know below in the comments, because we are intrigued. Regardless of which side of the coin your character will land, good or evil, we hope your journey in Vera will bring to light the questions that remain unanswered. We hope this speculative exploration into the lore of the gods 
has ignited a fire in perhaps your imagination and given you a new perspective on the grand design of the universe in which Vera resides. So until next time, may the balance of the cosmos guide you, and may the light and shadow within you find harmony. Safe travels, adventurers.